Welcome to the next video in the Truck Camper Build Series, part 55. In this video, you are gonna see paint prep, and maybe more, maybe more. Let's show you here, this is what we got. Bring, bring her inside here. If you're new to this channel, what we got here is a fully rebuilt 1977 Sunline Truck Camper. Uh, they got a whole playlist, check it out. So that's what we got, and right now you are in the 55th part. The 55th part of this actual build. In the previous video, we got all of the corner trim installed and is done. So follow along as we get the rest of the things buttoned up before paint. So there are some screw ups of the siding on the aluminum and I've incorporated some patches as you can see here at the utility connection ports. So there's not holes. So I gotta do that on the back. So here you are on the back of the camper and I screwed up and I cut too wide, whatever. Don't worry about why it's there, but I gotta put a patch here, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'll show you what it's gonna look like as a final product. There's another example of a patch. Essentially what I have is pieces of the actual aluminum uh, siding of the same pattern. I forget what this pattern's called, but they all have different patterns back in this era. Uh, I know one of them's called Mesa. There's all these different ones, if you research buying aluminum for these older campers, you're in the same boat. So I'm gonna use that pattern and just overlay it. Got the first patch on there. Scuffed it and riveted it on. Now I'm working on the second patch. Get that on there and then once all this is done, I'm still gonna take a router and cut out the window. Here's the gnarly looking patches. Gonna scuff this, got 220 on a sponge. Don't forget, this is all gonna get sealed in between here, so. Ready? Go get it. Right here, Sherman. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Hello, we are back at it for another day of fun with this thing. We got these patches done for the AC area that I screwed up. Now I have to make there is no aluminum down below the step, or below the door, so I'm making a patch here that will cover that. This is what I have so far, and it's just a flat piece of aluminum that someone, or the previous owner actually had it over top of the window as like a deflector for rain. So, we're gonna use this, I already cut it to the size, I'm gonna scuff it right now with 220, and then I'll form it. Now we have the sanded down, Piece, and we're gonna make a one inch flange. Now that that's marked, we'll just line it up here and then I'll peen it over. There's a the formed piece. It's gonna go right here. So I'm gonna wipe this down with some alcohol just to clean up all the whatever the debris on there. Get the debris off and then it's ready. We're gonna put this piece on. This is the last piece. I don't know why I'm changing how I'm putting this on, but we're gonna, whatever, who cares. So here's the deal. We got the piece of aluminum that's gonna go on right here. That's gonna go on just like that, right? And I have it overlapping over top of this piece of aluminum. And I got a piece of butyl tape here on either side to seal this edge, and I'm gonna line this bottom edge up with just below the, uh, the actual door frame so that I don't have to trim it with the router right there. I got stainless staples in here. There you go. And I'll just caulk this for good measure later, and that's the end of it, that piece is done. I gotta drill this hole for the battery vent intake there we go so here's the vent and I just uh, took a file to that to get it a little bit better and right there it is that's how she'll be happy baby boy oh. <laughs> this is a vacuum connection port for this router but I don't have a small vacuum, I got a big vacuum, so I just duct taped it. The plan is to take this uh, end cut 
style flush cut with the bearing and ride it along the wood and trim off all of the extra that you know kind of messed up on so the router with the carbide bit to trim out the openings it's not working for me I tried I tried I tried low speed high speed it ends up burning melting the aluminum and then it gums up the bit and then <clears throat> it turns into this type of stuff and it doesn't cut it, it just melts it. You only go like an inch before it clogs. It clogs like this right here. There's a, it gets clogged and that's melted on there. I gotta take a screwdriver and really pry that off. So I'm not doing that anymore. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I don't really care because it's wasting a lot of precious time that we have here, or that we don't have. So I'm just taking, this isn't the cleanest way, but I'm just gonna take my whatever these are called and just do one of these deals and go right or right down the line and it's it comes out pretty clean it's when you know when you, you live in a humid climate it is literally water on the concrete because of how high the humidity is today what i ended up doing was cutting very close with tin snips as close as i could which was a pain in the butt but this was the only way i was able to use the router with the flush cut bit <clears throat> with it operating correctly so i would get it as close as i could which kind of really made it look not a nice flush cut at all but it was the only way it worked and once I got it really close, then I came at the lowest RPM I could run the flush cut bit when it was just taken off just a, you know, eighth inch or less material and it would cut this without clogging up uh, and burning the aluminum. So that's, that's the ticket. If any of you guys are doing this um, and you're using similar tools as I was, I mean, tin snips will get you there. Just also, so you know, it just won't be as clean of a cut. Figured I'd get a update here. I forgot to cut out, because this wasn't cut out before, for the exterior shower. Also, just showing that there's a bunch of slivers and stuff like that, uh, and even with the router, it's not perfect, so I'm taking a file and going in here and cleaning up all the edges, which definitely takes time, but it will help it just makes it nicer. It'll make the butyl tape seal better. The window will sit flush. That cat here is gonna live in it forever. This is the next step. We have to seal every single piece. Now we're using this product here. This is the um, caulking that we're using. It's paintable and it flexes really well. Post a comment in two years and ask me how it holds up. How about that? Because I've never used it before. Any crack, any pinhole, anything, I'm sealing up with this stuff. And then around each, this is a bad example, but each side of the trim, that's not the roof, um, I am putting the caulk down so that, because like I said, it is paintable and it's an extra insurance of sealing it. All right, so we got this whole bead on here cat dish of really soapy water dish soap and water and I just wet my finger and then what I kind of found is to kind of just like I don't know how to describe what that motion is but it seems to make it work the best it's weird to say it you know whatever that that seems to work any staples that aren't going to get covered, anything that you got going on, that you got problems. Like here's a prime example that there is a crack going down of this aluminum. And now on the back side, there is a Eternabond roof seal tape on the back side. But as a, another layer, it's going to get the caulk. Here is the 
patches. This is where the air conditioning is going to be. That's all caulked and it'll be painted over. So, uh, what are you working on now? I'm working on taping all of the roof right now, but I'm taping everything off so that I can spray it with paint for the spray in the walls. And this is a painter's plastic that has the scotch blue uh, tape connected to it already and then there's plastic you can unfold it that's what i'm doing i'm just taping it up unfolding it a little bit and then masking taping it up top here is the entire roof after all of the um paper and plastic on all the edges we got this going top is taped and we're just taping off some of the electrical and getting some of the windows covered and uh, getting it prepped. The tie downs are, are taped. There's really not that much to tape. We just got socks shoved in the holes thanks to Jen's idea there. All of the openings are taped up. Give it a once over. Oh, we gotta get that flapper in. That'll cause problems. And the next step is there's a panel that covers the fridge and the propane storage and just some some other random panels that I need to, that I want to paint the same color as the exterior. So this is like the uh, vent for the kitchen. This is the other vent. So got to prep these for paint and then also the door needs to be prepped for paint on the outside here this portion, because that's going to get sprayed, so. Here you go. Got the parts scuffed. Both sides ready to go. Going to clean them up with some alcohol. I almost forgot about the door. So the exterior door, it's aluminum. It's a, I just scuffed it and I scuffed that trim piece which I'm pretty sure is plastic. I'm just gonna paint the aluminum for now and tape everything else off and then clean that up better on a later date. Here's a look. Got the stuff all taped up. Got the other panels hanging. Ready for paint. Prep work, baby, prep work. Very time consuming there. All that taping and paper and, you wouldn't think it, but it really is. It's very time consuming. So I'm gonna pull the four wheeler out, plastic, put it some places that I don't wanna get overspray. Just prior to painting, Got to wipe the whole thing down with alcohol and then it's ready for paint and that's going to be on the next video. This concludes the paint prep video for the 1977 Sunline truck camper and if you made it this far in the video then you've probably seen another video. If not, check out the other playlist truck camper build playlist and you'll see the beginning and the end and everything else in between so with that we're gonna say see you later tank is looking for his food and he's trying to figure out why i have that thing near his house but we're, we're gonna keep going all right see you next time on the truck camper build series